Hey everybody, Rosematter here. Welcome to part 9 of my Umaneko Let's Play. In the last episode, as I expected, we had some more deaths. This time it was Hideyoshi and Ava. So that is narrowing it down even more to, like, who's behind it? Is it one... Well, actually, this one's really tough because it was a locked room situation and everybody was together at the time of the murders. So it seems more and more like there might be a 19th person that might be behind the murders and uh, Kinzo's still missing. So that could be a potential clue as well. But anyway, we are going to get back into it and see if we can uh, try and solve this mystery of who is behind the murders. My guess is probably not. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a little while until we actually figure it out. But hopefully we will at least get some more clues. So without further ado, let's get back into it. That's why he proclaimed it as though she didn't care whether they agreed or not. If anyone had a right to object, it would have been George, but he looked as though he had shed enough tears. Still facing away from them, George nodded slightly and rose to his feet, and everyone else agreed in response. Not so he still hadn't opened the head's western-style envelope. Oh my god, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot all about the envelope that she had picked up. But since they would all be leaving the room now, she decided she would unseal it in the parlor where everyone could watch. As soon as they walked down to the hallway to head back to the parlor, some of them immediately felt something out of place, or maybe sensed something strange. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, well, it said at the beginning, boiler room. Ooh, I'm wondering if uh, some bodies are being burned? Maybe somebody took the bodies from the storehouse and are burning it in the boiler room to try and, like, cover up even more of the crime scene. As they all sniffed the air, they did notice a horribly foul burnt smell, unlike anything any of them had ever smelled before, drifting through the hallway. <laughs> After noticing a burnt smell, it was natural that Kumasawa, who had just been cooking in the kitchen, suspected that her own clumsiness had caused it. Kumasawa hastily dashed away. After nodding at Genji's order, Kanon went chasing after her. The others, although they did not run, also followed in order to search for the source of the smell. <laughs> Unless somebody has burnt some popcorn in the microwave, which is, to me, one of the grossest smells. I'm feeling it's a body being burned. Or multiple bodies being burned. Natsui was reluctant to open the windows in a situation where self-defense was so important. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to be like, I've come back. The fans are also not working. Oh, poor George. He just sounds so defeated, understandably. So emotionless. It seemed that George had already climbed out of the abyss of his sorrow. All that filled his chest now was the quiet flame of hatred towards the killer who had stolen the lives of his beloved parents. A lot of locked rooms in this, uh, in this game.使用人室から擦り
どうやって部屋から出入りしたのかって<笑>みんなで騒いだ気がするぜ Back then, everyone had been making a fuss over how grandfather disappeared from his room. Because of the receipt that Auntie Ava had stuck in the door on a whim, it was revealed that the door had remained sealed. And since Aunt Natsui had been the only person to enter or exit during that time, she had come under suspicion. Auntie Ava had proposed a theory about how Aunt Natsui might have thrown grandfather out the window and left by the door himself. But this door is much simpler. It was sealed from the inside by the door chain. The window had also been closed from the inside, and the bodies had been in the room. This time, it really was, without exaggeration, a true locked room. Well, are the windows not able to be opened from the inside? Like, the killer could have escaped out through the window, or maybe there's like a hatch on, like, on the floor, but I'm sure, like, one of the servants or Jessica would have said something if that were the case. That's right. If you include grandfather's disappearance, three incidents had occurred, and all three times the door had been the point of interest. The first was the shutter. There was a key in the servant room, and if we assume someone knew about that, that can't, be really, can't really be called a locked room. The next was the door sealed by the receipt. However, since Aunt Natsui had entered the room, She could have let grandfather out through the window or thrown him out, and she would have been able to lock the door before leaving. Or, like my crazy theory, he could have hidden until the receipt was gone and left the room later. Basically, this door could be defeated with a handful of desperate tricks. In that sense, you really can't call this one a locked room either. And now we have the door sealed with the door chain. Finally, we have to give up. The window, the door, everything had been locked from the inside. It was a perfect locked room. The first hadn't been a locked room because everyone could be suspected. The second hadn't been a locked room because Aunt Natsui could have been suspected. But this time, no one can be suspected. Well, this is what you wanted, Valor. You, you wanted a murder that couldn't be explained、uh, by humans, so careful what you wish for. This room was a perfect locked room sealed by a door chain that denied access equally to everyone. なら、犯人は室内に入らずに犯行に及んだ部屋の外から何らかの方法で確かにチェーンである以上人が通れるほどは開けなくても多少の隙間を空けることができるノックして顔を覗かせたところを襲うとかいや甘いか甘いよなエヴァおばさんの遺体が扉のすぐそばだったならそれも考えたぜだがエヴァおばさんは部屋の奥のベッドの上しかも秀吉おじさんはバスルームだったチェーンの隙間からでは姿を見ることもできねえし手を伸ばすこともできねえチクショー全然ダメだぜさっぱりだ And they're talking about this in front of Beatrice's portrait. Is that a clue, maybe? She is the one behind it? It does seem more and more like it might be the cause of, you know, something supernatural. Something was tugging softly at my sleeve. It was Maria. Oh, is she gonna say, like, hey, you asked for this? Ah,、oh, uh, she is too. She's like, this is what you wanted. You asked me to tell Beatrice to make sure that you couldn't deny the murder being done by her. Manzoku-te. マトラは親族の誰かを疑うのが嫌だから犯人はベアトリーチェで会ってほしいと願ったよだからベアトリーチェは叶えたマトラが言った通り絶対に人間には無理なことをしてマトラに魔女の存在を信じさせてくれた Hopefully, Bowler doesn't feel like he kind of wished for this. He's going to feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, you kind of deserve that, Maria. I tapped Maria, who was laughing unpleasantly on the head with my fist. Definitely feels like everyone's starting to lose their、um, patience with her. それより教えやがれエヴァおばさんたちの部屋の扉にもまた怪しげな落書きがされていた
あれもまた魔法人なのか<笑>あれは特に覚えやすい特徴的な形なんだからあのくらい知っててほしいねおいて知らねえから花を持たせてやってんだごちゃごちゃ言わねえで解説しろいバトラは暴力的だねあんまり意地悪すると教えないよあいたい<笑>言うよ言うよこのげんこつ男あれは月の一の魔法陣だよ何の意味があるその魔法陣のご利益は書かれてるヘブライ語の意味は記されているのは旧約聖書「詩編第107編」の16節「主は聖堂の扉を破り鉄の缶抜きを打ち破ってくださいました」魔法陣の効用は2つ1つはいかなる方法によって閉ざされた扉でも開くことができるそりゃ便利な魔法だぜつまり魔法の力に頼らなきゃ開けぬ密室の扉っていう魔女様のアピールってわけか。There's this thing about doors repeatedly, like Natsui,、uh, you know, there was a thing on her door, and then there was、uh, the shutter door, and now Ava and Hideyoshi's door. Seems to be a recurring thing here. もう一つの紅葉は。開かぬ扉を八方塞がりの事態に見立て、扉を開く。難解な事態の時に用いることでそれまで思いつきもしなかった解決策を与えてくれるんだよ平たく言うと観察力や洞察力ひらめきや直感を授けてくれるんだね<笑>ベアトリーチェはバトラごとき人間風情にこの扉の開き方がわかるものかって挑発してるんだよ<笑> Hello, smack. <laughs> Yo, Shmo, Damare. Choto does it. So no major no chose. Maria Chan, Konoyoni, Majo Mo Akuma Mosonza Shinai. Oh, wow, George is dropping it. He's like, I'm not gonna play pretend with you anymore. I'm past that. Tosan to Kasawa, Tarika Korosta. Maybe she's gonna be like, Oh, George, you're the one who, you know, you're the one who I thought believed the most in this. それが僕のよく知る人間なのか知らない人間なのかは分からないでもそのどちらであっても必ず人間なんだしかしどうやってせいぜい1 0ンチ程度しか開かない扉の隙間からどうやったら室内の2人をそれにしても耐え難い匂いです、oh、yeah, we saw to figure out this whole thing. 一体何事なのですか pretty sure I'm right. pretty sure it's some bodies. Kenan and Kumasawa, who had gone ahead, realized before they even reached the kitchen that the smell wasn't coming from there. That was because on their way to the kitchen, they noticed that an even thicker wave of stench was rising up from the stairs leading to the basement. Yes! Those stairs led to the underground boiler room. The mansion's boiler was old and had been playing up recently. Both of them had witnessed problems with the boiler on several occasions, but they'd never smelled it belching out a stench like this before. Slam. Ooh, that look on Cannon's face. The sound they had heard from the basement had definitely been the sound of a door closing. Although she did phrase it as a question, Kumasawa too had already realized that the sound couldn't have been anything else. Kumasawa was so surprised at the sound, her knees gave way yet again and she cowered. Because at that very moment, no one could have been in the boiler room. Just a few seconds ago, everyone had been crowded together in Ava and Hideyoshi's room. Well, not Kinzo. So, who caused the sound of a door closing just now? <laughs> Instantly gathering the situation, Cannon ran down,、uh, down towards the basement. Since they had heard the sound of a door closing just now, There was no trace of someone climbing the stairs. It meant that the person who had closed the door was now inside the boiler room. If the boiler room had been a dead end, Cannon wouldn't have rushed in so hastily. But Cannon was a servant, so he knew. There were two entrances one that opened to the mansion, and one that opened to the courtyard. If he didn't chase them now, they might slip away. 
Kumasawa reached the same conclusion long after Kennen did, but she couldn't let him go alone. Oh no. If they're going to be confronting someone, they might. I, I have a feeling the two of them are going to get killed off right now. The thing in the boiler room was the killer, an opponent who had easily killed six adults in the first murder, and Kennen would be no match if he simply confronted them alone. <laughs> Kumasawa, I'm sorry to say, I don't think you're going to be much of a uh, deterrent for the killer. <laughs> Of course, yeah, there we go. By this argument, Kumasawa joining him alone wouldn't mean anything, but at any rate, after delay, Kumasawa decided she mustn't let Kanan go alone, and she dashed down the stairs. At that time, Kanan was already in the boiler room. The boiler room's characteristic damp heat tormented him. It had always been an unpleasantly smelly and hot place. And on top of that, the room was full of that horrible stench, which made Kennen feel like he was going to be sick. There's no doubt that this room was the origin. In that case, Kennen should have been searching for where the smell was coming from. However, Kennen kept gazing straight forward as he grabbed a hatchet from a tool shelf just to the side of the door. He hadn't stretched out his hand because he'd wanted a hatchet. He had wanted to grab a weapon, any weapon. Why? Kanan gazed into the darkness where the naked light bulb couldn't pierce. Then he answered. The words coming from Kanan's mouth was swallowed up by the darkness. That darkness suddenly started to swirl, glittering. Oh, is it- is it the butterflies? Is it the butterflies? <gasps> the butterflies, Beatrice! If she's real, I'm still undecided on it. <laughs> but, I'm like, unless he's imagining this. I don't know, that seems, uh... Pretty weird. It was a very fantastical scene. Golden sparkling butterflies that hid in the shadows all over the boiler room. Flapped their wings, twinkling beautifully and disappeared into the darkness, gathering together. Kenan continued speaking, directing his words at the darkness as it swallowed the butterflies up. I hate that sound. That, I don't like it. It's screechy, and I don't care for it. But as the butterflies gathered in the darkness, they, perhaps, probably, no, they must have laughed. But Kenan continued to speak without faltering in the slightest. <laughs>親方様は天文学的なリスクを的中できることを奇跡と呼び、その結果得られる天文学的な配当を魔法と呼んでいた。親方様とお前がどんな魔法を求めてルーレットに挑んでいるのか。しかし、ルーレットには赤でも黒で
次の召喚者を待つがいいベアドリーチェー When a cannon swung the hatchet upwards and tried to dive into the darkness, the darkness definitely sneered. It sneered at that courage as vulgar, lazy, futile, and meaningless. Oh, I hate that sound so much! Uh oh. Uh oh. I think he. I think. I think he did. Cannon, his hatchet still held aloft, couldn't take another step after that. With a clang, the hatchet that Cannon had been grasping fell and rolled on the floor. And following that, with a pair of thuds, Cannon's knees hit left then right. That hand, which looked like it was trying to catch the sky now that the hatchet had been dropped, gradually lowered and rested on his chest. Then the other hand did the same. Oh shit. Yep. Well, you tried, bud. Damn. Damn, that sucks. Right there was a handle with a demon shaped design engraved upon it. The same type of weapon that had been stabbed into Ava and Hideyoshi's foreheads was in Cannon's chest. <coughs> Fresh blood dribbled from the corner of Cannon's mouth as it twisted in anguish. It was makeup, too powerful for Cannon's white skin. It's weird that they keep calling it makeup. I don't know if there's a reason why they call it that. Like, it's like they're. I'm not gonna say afraid to say blood. I'm just wondering why they use the term makeup. Almost like this is a play and this isn't real. I don't know. <laughs> Around the scene, the glittering gold butterflies danced mesmerizingly through the darkness. It was a beautiful, beautiful dance, a funeral march of tribute, ridicule, and contempt for a single boy's self-sacrifice. Cannon had already been prepared for his own death, but he attempted one last measure of resistance, to reject death in at least the form it had been delivered to him. With both hands, he grasped the handle of the weapon sticking into his chest, and gritting his teeth at the acute, unearthly pain, he pulled it out. Oh no, dude, you don't do that! No! No, whenever you're stabbed, you gotta leave the thing in! That's what keeps the blood in. <laughs> oh, buddy. For only a moment, a bright red spray gushed out. Ugh, it made an unpleasant bloop sound. It probably resembled the sound of Cannon's soul as it was sucked into the swamp of the dead. Cannon san? Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
She's doing a good job. Madler, thinking quickly, took a large flashlight from the tool shed alongside the door and used its light to cut through the darkness not so he was glaring into. But the light only shone on mechanical-looking piping and a door. The door had been left open, a small crack, and it was obvious that someone had left there in a hurry. Padler let out a war cry as he slammed into the door. Cool air from outside suddenly rushed in. There were some thin, rough stair uh, stairs leading up. Badler ran up them, shouting. Natsui also rushed up the stairs, chasing after Badler. At the top was the courtyard. The courtyard of the mansion had been built strictly for lighting purposes, so it wasn't a very elegant place. Because it was surrounded on all sides, the air was calm and completely undisturbed, even though they could hear the sound of strong winds. There was only the gentle, sorrowful rain. Through the cold, scattered raindrops, Battler dashed up the stairs and into the courtyard where he looked in every direction. Of course, the odds of him finding a suspicious silhouette just standing around nonchalantly were pretty much zero. Battler turned around looking in all directions. He turned again and again. He kept spinning until he almost lost his sense of direction. He prayed he would see the culprit somewhere in the scenery, but there was no chance. All he saw as he spun was more and more of the mansion's heartless walls and windows. Furthermore, there were two entrances into the mansion from the courtyard, and neither of them were locked. Because the courtyard couldn't be entered from outside the mansion, the doors had been built without locks. He couldn't tell which one they had left through. He had to give up. Badler pounded the wall with his fist, swearing, <laughs> Father put his head against the wall and scratched at it with his fingernails as he cried. え、ばばさんも秀吉おじさんも昔から どうせ。どうして。人ってのはな。殺しまったらな。二度と生き返らねえんだぞ。竹の子みてえにひょいひょい生えてきちゃこねえんだぞ。どうして殺すんだよ。どうして。どうせ。ああ、ああ、I oh, oh, feel so he's, he's so sweet. He keeps telling himself he's not going to cry anymore, but I love him. Oh, like non-toxic masculinity right there. He's not afraid to show his emotions. He's not afraid to cry and show, you know, a little bit of uh like you know, vulnerability around people. He's great. He's great. Badler was a boy who could understand the feelings of pain and regret in a person's heart. So he cried with all his strength. He just has so much empathy. Natsui, who had always thought of Badler as a strong person, was a little surprised to find he had this delicate side and at the same time understood how easily hurt the heart of a young person could be. So she held him. Oh, Natsui, I like her. I'm liking her more and more. <laughs> Ah! 
Madler, after sobbing into Natsui's chest for a while, wiped his tears with a bitter smile and tried to convey he'd cried more than enough already, just as he'd done the times before. Oh, let's hope so. I don't know about that anymore. <laughs> oh, let's hope so. I don't know about that anymore. Oh, let's hope so. I when the seagulls cry, the crime will be solved. But for some reason, Badler felt a slight sense of uneasiness, as if the seagulls would never cry again. That couldn't be true. When the typhoon passes, the lively seagulls should return to the harbor again. I returned to the boiler room along with Aunt Natsui and told the room weekly that we hadn't found anything. They told me Dr. Nanjo and George Aniki had carried Kanonkun to the servant room. The servant room has a first aid kit and a sink, and could apparently function as a nurse's office. Kumasawa-san and Jessica had accompanied them. Stains from Kanonkun's blood remained on the floor. Judging by the large amount of blood lost and the ruthless shape of the weapon that had fallen unceremoniously to the ground, I figured that Dr. Nanjo's treatment would probably end in vain. That weapon was doubtlessly the same type that had been stuck in Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi's foreheads. But wait, isn't that demonic design on the handle a little different? There seemed to be a small differences in that part. Still, as far as their overall shape was concerned, the weapons were all the same type. Though it seemed brutal, we'd left the weapon stuck into Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi's to prevent the crime scene. So this was the first time I was able to have a perfect view of the entire weapon. Indeed, the weapon was not bladed like a knife, but shaped like an ice pick. Or rather, a thin stake. And also, it had a spiral-shaped design, sort of like a drill? To use a disturbing analogy, it looked like something that might be driven into the hearts of human sacrifices and some demonic ritual. Including the handle, it was about 25 centimeters long. Half of that was the stake-shaped part, which was stained with deep red blood. The length of the blood-stained part made it clear just how deeply it must have penetrated into Kanonkun's chest. But, ankle, uh, but Aunt Natsui and the rest were not even looking at the weapon, instead standing in front of the incinerator where the horrible stench was emanating from. They had probably pulled that out of the furnace where it must have been burning. It was still smoldering and kept sending out dense waves of that awfully unpleasant smell. Genji-san and Maria were staring down at it. Aunt Natsui probably couldn't stand to look directly at it. She kept shaking her head, her back to it. <coughs> I thought that after everything that happened, nothing could surprise me anymore, but this was... I stood there for a while moaning with a rising urge to vomit. The true nature of that unearthly stench was the charred smell from within the incinerator. Yep, of a burning corpse. The clothes, the surface of the body and the hair were all hideously burned. Okay, so it's one, one body, so the assumption is going to be that it's Kinzo, right? But maybe... The fact that they burned it, they did that on purpose to hide exactly who it could be. Yeah, see there. That grotesque corpse was in a state where not the face, nor the age, nor even the gender could be guessed at. Like, they could have maybe taken one of the bodies from the storehouse and thrown that into the incinerator, or maybe there's another body hiding on the island that we don't even know about that could be used. So maybe Kinzo did that to make them think that it could be him? When I thought about it calmly, I realized the corpse appearing at this time could only be one person. Grandfather, who disappeared that morning and whose whereabouts had been unknown. It's like, uh, Badler says though, flip the chessboard. That's probably exactly what the killer wants us to think, and that is that it is Kinzo, but maybe it's not. <laughs> Yeah, Badler, you're on my side. He and I, man, same wavelength. I'm At Natsui, with her handkerchief over her mouth and her eyes averted, pointed and told me to look at the burnt corpse's feet. Ah, well, maybe. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Just as Genji-san had said, there were six toes on each foot. Each of the toes had been arranged so normally that I hadn't noticed. It's funny, I've only ever heard of polydactyl being with like cat paws because I work with animals and sometimes we get the cats. I love polydactyl cats. They just have such big paws and I love them. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. <laughs> polydactyl literally means many fingers. Because of a little mistake by God when the person is born, one of their toes or fingers splits into two, and the total number increases. But a big deal isn't usually made of polydactyl in the world at large. That's because it isn't a disease, but something people are born with. So the hospital is already aware of it when they're babies, and at about the time they turn one year old, they're given surgery to make them normal. So even if a child has polydactyl, it's treated before they become self-aware, so they might not even remember it themselves. Incidentally, it seems that it can occur with a probability of about 1 in every 2,000 babies. So even though it's not usually seen, it isn't that rare at all. Speaking of which, I think Uncle Hideyoshi mentioned something to me long ago. Something about how even uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the man who had unified Japan at the end of the Sen Sengoku era, or period, possessed six fingers on one hand. According to Aunt Natsui, among the many Ushiromiya family heads, the one praised most for their wisdom all possessed polydactyl. Because of that, when Grandfather was born, his relatives were all excited at the thought he might become another wise leader. And when the leading relatives all died in the Great Kanto earthquake, it was apparently argued if anyone could restore the family from that, it would be Grandfather because of the auspi auspicious sign of his birth. If Grandfather thought being the head was not a bad gig, the sixth toe must have been pretty lucky for him. Come to think of it, I think I've heard that some countries where it's believed that people with polydactyl should be treated as gods and revered. This is besides the point, but it's fairly common in mystery novels for a corpse to be burned to hide whose body it is. But it looks like in Grandfather's case, just being toasted wasn't enough to hide the proof of his identity. And Grandfather's body was not simply burned- oh, there's the- there's the drops! Okay, we're gonna have to check out his, uh, thing in just a moment. Just like Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi, and Ken and Kun too, who had been stabbed in his chest. He had one of those demon ice picks stuck into his forehead. Alright, let's take a head uh, let's take a moment and let's see, all of these dead bodies. Cannon's still not technically dead yet. Maybe he'll survive, we'll see, but let's check it out. Alright, Kinzo, burned in the incinerator with a weapon resembling an ice pick having been rammed into his forehead. The old mage's wish scattered ungranted. This is but one possible result of the gamble he always knew was not in his favor. Actually, on that note, let's... Let's read the epitaph again, and let's see how we're doing in terms of how things are going. Okay, so on the first twilight, sacrifice the six chosen by the key. So, there we go. On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. On the third twilight, those who re remain shall praise my noble name. Now, here's where this is... <laughs> ah, okay. So, if we're going by this assumption here, the police are not going to be showing up because there's still a lot of twilights that need to happen in order for this, uh, you know, epitaph to be come reality, which so far it seems to be following pretty closely. Alright, on the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. On the sixth, stomach. Seventh, knee. Eighth, leg. On the ninth, the witch revives and none shall be left alive. On the tenth twilight, the journey ends and you all reach the home of the gold. And then the whole thing about how they say that they revive everybody at the end. Resec resurrects all the dead people's souls, so that's my that's my guess is that each chapter similar to Higurashi and I know I should stop comparing Higurashi to Umineko but I'm wondering if it's just like it just resets once everybody's alive again and they're just like they keep going in a loop until the until a person can solve this 
and it's not the witch who wins the game, but it's one of these, uh, one of the humans wins the game. They're just going to keep repeating it over and over, and maybe each chapter is just, you know, a different world line, a different uh, cycle of this repeating until somebody wins. That's my guess so far anyway, but let's go back. At Natsui let her head droop and closed her eyes tightly. This room had also become a vital crime scene for us to hand over to the police. The police that will probably never come. It was decided we would leave Grandfather's corpse here and lock the door, sealing it. It wasn't clear when Grandfather's corpse started burning in the incinerator. Since, according to Genji-san, the flames hadn't been that strong, the body must have started burning a long time ago, and that stench must have slowly crept out of the furnace and filled the room bit by bit, eventually pouring out and climbing up the staircase. Putting aside whether he was rare or well done, damn. Grandfather had been brought out, killed and burned, even though he had started out in the locked room created by his auto-lock. There's probably no doubting this. However, according to Genji-san, the boiler room is usually locked. The probability that someone outside our group was lurking around committing the crimes was now overwhelmingly high. And there was also a good chance that this person was walking around with something like a master key. After all, the doors and windows throughout the mansion had been checked. But despite that, the culprit was freely strutting around the mansion. After this latest crime, can we now be sure that a 19th person exists? They haven't shown themselves once, and yet they're trying to tout their existence. Along with Kiryasan's chessboard theory, I've been using this contradiction to deny the existence of a 19th person. By flipping over the chessboard once more, the very fact that this crime makes it perfectly obvious that a 19th person exists means that the existence of the 19th person is even less possible, as long as that 19th person doesn't show themselves in front of us. If the culprit could get Grandfather out through the door sealed by the receipt, if they could kill Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi from the other side of a door sealed by a chain, then is it possible for them to even create a fictional 19th person through strange tricks and devices? If we still want to believe the culprit is among us, then the list of suspects is very short. The four of us kids, Aunt Natsui, Genji-san, Kumasawa Bachan, and Dr. Nanjo. One of these people has to be the culprit. Wait, we can't be sure of that. Just a second ago, we started doubting whether the body here was actually grandfather's, right? Maybe we should try thinking of the other bodies in the same way. For example, the first six all had their faces horribly destroyed. Some of the bodies had kept enough of their faces for us to confirm who they were, but my old bastard, for example, had lost his entire face as though it had been peeled off. Ooh, interesting theory! So is he saying that there could just be a reserve of corpses out there and it just got, uh... They got the clothes swapped and maybe some of the siblings are still walking around the island, <laughs> lurking in the shadows? We'd only figured out which body was which by their clothes and surroundings. Had the culprit prepared a fake corpse beforehand, disguised it to make look like they died, then hid somewhere and continued their killing spree. It sounds ridiculous, but it doesn't mean it's an impossible trick. It's too early to give in to this 19th person. No, this witch. Maria hadn't gone with everyone else, but had remained in the boiler room. The thing she was staring fixedly, or she was staring fixedly at, was probably not grandfather's body, but the demon's ice pick that was sticking out of his forehead. She's like, can I have it for my collection, please? No doubt an irresistible item for the obsessed. I wrapped her on the head. Oi, Maria! ベアトリーチの目的は何なんだ俺たち全員の命かベアトリーチはもうすぐ蘇るんだよその時誰も生き残れはしないよくも笑えるもんだぜ自分だけ蚊帳の外だと思ってるのか<笑><笑> どうして自分の身に危機が迫っていると感じないどうして怯えないベアトリーチは約束してくれたもん 
私は黄金鏡へ連れて行ってもらえるんだよそこはねしがらみも何もない全ての人たちがずっと一緒にいつまでも優しくし合っていける素敵な場所なんだよ私は楽しみだよその時はもうすぐだもん I guess that's the equivalent of a kid saying, like, I can't wait to go to heaven where I can be reunited with,、uh, with people and it will all be, like, so nice up there. It's like, that's a really creepy thing for a kid to say. It's like, they can't wait to die, essentially. <laughs> oh, so creepy. So creepy. Just what kind of person is Maria? I only know what Mario was like six years ago when she was three. She'd been pure and obedient, a good kid. This new Mario six years later and the Mario I knew didn't seem to fit together. Just who is she, this witch who calls herself Mario? To her, with her obstinate belief in witches. The series of unsolvable crimes is proof that witches actually exist. Every time something occurs that would be difficult for a human, it becomes a little harder for the rest of us not to believe in that witch called Beatrice. It must be an intense pleasure for Maria to see her relatives who once firmly denied the witch's existence start acknowledging her existence one by one. Is that why she's in high spirits? <sighs> Maria, more than one thing I hear. The answer is the same, but more than one thing I hear. Oh? You were the one who got the letter to Maratheian. そいつは誰なんだほうだからベアトリーチェバトラがまだ信じないほうマリア only repeated what she had already said マリア had met with this 19th person the witch had that really been a 19th person or had that been one of the 18 who told her to say otherwise all that's certain is that マリア has been with the rest of us constantly has always had an alibi Hasn't done anything that would put her under suspicion. She's simply overjoyed at being made Beatrice's messenger and certainly is not our 19th person. I think. <laughs> That's、uh, typical of these games. Never say anything is impossible. That's right. I wonder what's written in that letter. We... <laughs> The letter again. I forgot about it because stuff keeps happening. I wonder what's written in that letter we picked up in Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi's room. Aunt Natsui should still have it with her. Oh, in the end, Kanakun did not regain consciousness. All right. That's kind of what I expected, but I was still kind of hoping maybe he would survive. Maybe if he hadn't pulled the thing out, he might have survived, but. Oh, Kanan. Let's take a look. Nope,、oh, wrong person. <laughs> Kanan, with a weapon resembling an ice pick having been rammed into his chest, he was found in the boiler room. How presumptuous for furniture. Even though Dr. Nanjo and the rest did all they could to heal him, there was very little that could be done on an island like this without medicine or proper facilities. However, Kanakun was the only human ever to confront the culprit. If only he could give us some kind of clue. But by the time he was carried here, it was already too late. I'm sorry. 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 再選を尽くしてくださりありがとうございましたドクター・ナンジョーシュータンスプレーバイアヴァイオントスプートゥブローズ・オーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・イーズ・He stopped trying to interfere and let her alone. Oh, George, what a sweetie. Like, he's probably lost the most of everybody here, and yet he's still trying to comfort other people. I'm not 
Damn, harsh way to put it, but not untrue. So Oh no, Jessica, don't say that. Now she's gonna now Kumasawa's gonna feel even worse. Emotion filled words that I never thought I'd hear from the normally tactful Jessica tumbled out of her. <laughs> when is Jessica tactful? <laughs> well, that's not the word I'd use to describe her. Kumasawa looking truly sorry could do nothing but hang her head. Jessica. There were tears in George and Iki's eyes again. Seeing Jessica break down crying probably brought back the pain of losing his parents. I had already cried myself dry, so I didn't want to cry anymore. However, I felt myself the pain in their hearts. Oh, Mari's gonna say something that's gonna probably set her off. Beatrice カノン君を殺したのがマリアに昨日手紙を渡したっていうベアトリーチェなのか。そいつはどこにいるんだよ。どこに隠れてるんだよ。私が見つけて引き裂いてやる。逃げよう。知ってるんだろ。犯人の正
ベアトリーチェが約束してくれたのその世界ではママも優しくてパパも一緒で優しいの Oh, that's pretty sad. That's a pretty sad reason like, to want to die. It's just like, I just want to live in a world where people are nice to me. Maria is going to go to the end of the day. Everyone is afraid of Beatrice. And it's not the case of the case. So, be safe. Beatrice has said that the storm will be over for the storm. So, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. 饒舌なマリアも嫌いじゃねえがとりあえずはそのくらいにしとけ魔女はいるいる言ってたお前にとってさぞや現状は愉快だろうがとりあえずそいつはお前だけでかみしめとけ他人にまで押し付けるんじゃねえおおここいつ前から気持ち悪いやつだとは思ってたけどおかしいぜどっかおかしいぜバトラは思わねえのかよケンジさんはおぉ、ジェスカ、tell us how you really feel, damn. It's like, uh, Rosa's not. Ro Rosa? Is that her? It's been. It feels like it's been so long since I died. Maria's mom, that's Rosa, right? Like, she didn't say it outright to Maria, I don't think, saying you're screwed up. Well, I'm sure she did say stuff like that. Now Jessica's saying that to her. Kumasa さんは母さんはどうだよマリアは犯人の正体を知ってて隠してる確かに直接手を下してるわけじゃないかもしれないでも間違いなく犯人の一味だぜそうさスパイさん私たちと一緒になんかいさせられないぜ<笑>マリアちゃん不謹慎な話を慎むべき時もあることを知りなさいこれ以上混乱に油を注ぐような真似が過ぎれば、oh, They're all turning on Maria <laughs> At Natsui glared at Maria with frightening eyes. Maria was used to Auntie Rose's loud style of scolding, but she apparently hadn't developed a resistance to this kind of silent telling off. She shrugged and kept her mouth shut. A desolate feeling filled the room. It felt as though things would just get more complicated if anyone spoke. How many people had already died? Six in Dad's group. Also, both Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi, Kanon Kun, grandfather. There were a whole 18 people on this island. Ten of those had been killed. More than half of us had been killed. And at this stage, there was absolutely no guarantee the remaining eight were going to be alright. Now, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm 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 going to be able to ナツヒおばさんに極めて同感だぜ<笑>犯人探しは今夜ゆっくりできるさ今はどこで籠城するかを考えた方がいい As I said this, I pointed out the clock to everyone It was already 8 at night We had been receiving shocks over and over again since the early morning Both our bodies and our minds were completely tired out There was still a long, long time until tomorrow We needed to find some place to barricade ourselves in, somewhere we could rest our bodies and feel even the slightest bit safe. I also have a doubt, and I also have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. I have a doubt, and I have a doubt. マスターキーを持ってましたかはい勤務時間中だったなら身につけていたはずです現場をいじらない方がいいったんでそこまでは調べなかったろうが誰かの鍵が奪われている可能性は否定できねえなそもそも犯人はバラ庭園倉庫のシャッターを開けるために一度使用人室を訪れている可能性がありますそこでマスターキーをすでに入手していると考えて There were many servants serving the Ushiromiya family. Because of that, there were several master keys. Furthermore, every time the shifts changed, the keys were passed between servants. She had to admit that the arrangement had been somewhat sloppy. Kari, you were killed by the pocket of the servant's pocket. Do you think that the key was closed? Do you think that the key was closed? 
私たちはお仕事の都合上すべてのお部屋の鍵を預かっておりますお屋敷もゲストハウスもすべてですつまり私たちはどこへ立てこもって鍵をかけようと意味がないってわけだ上等だぜ鍵なんかいるもんか来るなら来やがれってんだ帰り討ちにしてやるぜ敵は正面から来ないよ最初の6人はともかく母さんたちやカノン君そしておじい様の霊を見る限り敵は孤立した人間だけを狙ってる一部屋に固まっている僕たちのところへ堂々と乗り込んでこられるほどの力はないんだよそうだな兄貴の言う通りだひょっとするとおばさんのライフル銃が抑止効果として成立してるのかもしれないぜなら良いのですがあマリア言いたいことがあるんだろうがそいつは飲み込んでしばらく黙ってろ Oh, Maria might actually have some important information, but she's like, alright, I'll keep it to myself then. Oh. Maria probably wanted to say witches weren't afraid of things like guns or something like that. But if she were to say it out loud, the atmosphere around here would start to get pretty edgy. So, basically, we all have to stay secured in one room when tensions are already high, and Maria, especially, is pissing everybody off. That's not, that's not gonna end well. Everybody's gonna be at each other's throats <laughs> by like hour two of being locked together. I noticed and decided to put a stop to it. Yoroshi de Shoka, Ikaso dake. Sioni no Kagitaba demo Hirena Ibasuma. Oh, Kinzo's room, right? So the Vatoko des. Hi, Oyakata Samano, so sides. What is your hand? I got it. Gee, some of the Kimotuano Hianina, Hiri Takanai. I know Hiani Hiri Kagiwa, Nambo Arundeska. Nihon. 1本は常に私がもう1本は親方様がお持ちでしたが先ほどボイラー室の遺体からこれをゲンジさん took out a handkerchief out of his pocket and opened it showing us the burnt and filthy key to the study then he showed it alongside his own key which he had once lent to Aunt Natsui 本来なら警察のために鍵も残すべきだったのですが親方様より書斎の留守は必ず守るようにと仰せつけられておりましたもので私がお預かりさせていただいておりましたなるほどということは金蔵さんの書斎は唯一の安全地帯というわけですなそういうことになりますねあの怪しげな匂いの部屋に一晩も立てこもるなど考えたくもありませんがあの部屋が一番安全であることを今は認めなければならないようです<笑>その安全な部屋に閉じこもってたじい様を犯人は連れ出して殺してる絶対安全とは言い切れねえけどなバトラ君の説のおじい様がうまくレシートをやり過ごして自分の意思で部屋を出たと考えるなら牢上の価値はあるかもしれないへえ楽観的すぎだぜ兄貴 However, at the same time, I thought he brought up a pretty interesting point After all, this gives us a chance to question the enemy, the witch herself, about how the sealed door had been opened If we assume that the culprit used some technique to abduct grandfather from his study They would have to show us the same trick again if they wanted to assault us in the study It's an opportunity to force the culprit to demonstrate that trick right before our eyes. They're a real witch, we would be forcing them to say open sesame and open the door by magic right in front of us. But such a thing is probably impossible. If you flip over the chessboard, you realize the culprit is obviously just trying to act like they're a witch. If they really were a witch, all they'd have to do is appear in front of us and show off a spell colorful enough to silence all our doubts. Since they're avoiding doing that, everything must be the work of a fake witch who wants us to think otherwise. Therefore, a culprit who used a technique other than magic to defeat the locked room couldn't open the door before our eyes. Jisan no hayatte no wa, eight people de oshikake demo daijoubu na kurai no hiro sa nansu ka? Hai, bed ni sofa, mou furui mo arimasu no de, zeitaku o iwa nakereba 
十分に夜を越すことができます。I'm guessing people are probably gonna have to like stay awake in、um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like one person will like have to like in shifts, you know, like have a couple people awake, let other people sleep, because I assume everyone's not gonna just be able to sleep without having someone kind of keep an eye on things. And I'm guessing Genji will probably be the one like, I will stay awake and watch over you guys. Nagashini go fujo. Rezo kuni sakadana mo arimas. Phew. So it's a sgeze. Shikashi. Okashina mundana. 自分の家の中にさらに自分の家を作ったってのか島を丸ごと買って自分の夢を全て実現しきったじい様の最後の家にしちゃう随分手狭なんだなそうですねいつの頃からかお父様にとっては屋敷内ですら心を許せる場所ではなくなってしまったのでしょうそこに引きこもっていたのを私たちは嘲笑いそして今度は私たちがそこに立てこもろうってわけだ<笑>ジェシカスパッと words out ジェシカちゃんは立てこもるより犯人を探しに行きたいという感じだねもちろんこっちから探しに行って見つけられるなんて思っちゃいないぜ結局は待つしかないならどこで待ったって同じだろ逃げも隠れもしない客までテレビでも見ながらのんびり現れるのを待とうじゃねえかよベアトリーチ様をよ現れなければ現れないで十分です犯人を暴くのは私たちである必要がないからです正論ですが警察が来るまで危険を犯すべきではありませんありがとう南條先生私はお父様の書斎に移るべきだと思います確かにお父様が連れ出された可能性があり絶対の安全が保障されているわけではないしかしバトラ君の推理のお父様が何らかの方法で自ら書斎を出て外で襲われた可能性も否定できません That crazy theory had just been what I came up with to stop the argument however just as Auntie Ava had said even though that trick would work I can't begin to explain what motive could have made Grandfather do something so awkward to sneak out of his own study. Plus, that trick of hiding under the bed and waiting for the receipt to, re to be removed before escaping couldn't have been used unless Grandfather had known that the receipt was wedged in the door. Auntie Ava hadn't pointed out that last part, but it's clear how absurd the theory was. Then, does that mean that as Auntie Ava claimed, the door was sealed and it was a locked room? It's a doubtless fact that Aunt, um, is it a doubtless fact that Aunt Natsui was the culprit and that this room was a locked room? If Auntie was here now, she'd probably make that claim openly and do me the favor of blowing my strange theory away. But anyway, I had to admit that a room with both a bed and a toilet that all eight people could be shut up in, and with only two keys, both of which were gathered here, had to be the safest place in the mansion right now. At the very least, I figured this would be better than shutting ourselves up in the parlor again and saying nothing went wrong while we were in there before. No, wait. Were we safe only because we were shut up in the parlor? What if leaving that room and moving to an unexplored location is actually more dangerous? No good, no good, no goddamn good at all. My flimsy head is about to break out in a fever. As I keep flipping over the chessboard, the real and the inverse keep switching with each other over and over. And I lose my ability to believe anything. When it seems like the culprit is one of the 18, I want to believe in Beatrice. Once I start believing in Beatrice, I start wanting to find the culprit amid the 18. That keeps spinning around forever, and in the end, my thoughts haven't taken one step from when they started. Sounds like me coming up with theories. I come up with so many theories that I don't really stick to one. As soon as something happens, I'm like, oh, that pushes this one theory I have, but then something will happen. I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna throw that theory out, and I'm gonna. F It's just like. Until I get the answers or I get more clues, I'm kind of like. laying a couple of different theories out, and they all seem equally, like. possible to me. How far back in the past was it that Kiryasan taught me this chessboard way of thinking? That concept of examining the situation by flipping it over and thinking from the enemy's side. I get the feeling I was so interested in this way of thinking at the time that I let it guide the way I thought about everything. 
By the way, Kiri-san was Dad's co-worker back then. I hadn't dreamed that the day would come when she would be added to our family. Now we're gonna get some more backstory on Kiri, maybe. Didn't Kiri-san tell me something? I get the feeling she once said that, while this chessboard thinking was one way to look at things, it wasn't all powerful by any means. And in fact was actually bad to rely on too much. チェス版思考ってのはね、昔本で読んだゲーム理論というものを私なりに解釈したものよ。とても面白い学問だから、バトラクも大学に入ったら挑戦してみるといいわよ。ぜひやってみたいっす。それを勉強して、チェス版思考
Furthermore, this idea made it seem like there was only a single culprit. He was also afraid of Aunt Natsui's rifle, and this was very good for our emotional stability. But the fatigue and hunger were even harsher than we had imagined. So on Kumasawa-san's suggestion, we all went along to the kitchen and gathered some canned food which would be hard to poison to take in with us. All of Kumasawa-san's efforts to reward us with at least a nice dinner on this savage day regrettably came to nothing. The food piled up on the, on the serving cart looked just a little sad. We all started climbing the stairs. Aunt Natsui led the group, warily staring into the darkness with both eyes and the barrel of the gun. When we arrived on the third floor, just as Aunt Natsui had warned us beforehand, there was a mixture of a chemical smell and a sickly sweet aroma, a stench hanging in the air that felt like it was eating into our heads. This exceptionally magnificent door felt like the source of the stench. So this was the door to the forbidden study, which had turned away all who visited it. While Genji-san was unlocking the door, Mario was staring at the door and the doorknob with great interest. Oh, Maria pointed at the doorknob. A scorpion crest. Oh, interesting. No, designed like a magic circle arranged around a scorpion was inscribed there. This design, that's right. Isn't it just like those keyhole charms that Maria gave Jessica and me yesterday? しかも どうやって中のおじいさまを? Oh great, now she's saying that she can now Beatrice can control people, so if that's the case, having a bunch of people locked in a room might not be good, because maybe she could take over someone and be like, alright, kill everybody in the room. ああ、漫画で読んだな。ひひひひひひ。さそりの<笑> ドアノブに。ええ、夕べそう聞き。寝る前に扉の内側のドアノブにかけました。なら、夏日おばさんはとても幸運だよ。そうだったなら夕べ、ベアトリーチェは夏日おばさんに指一本触れられなかっただろう
so she couldn't break through the door. So she was annoyed, so she scratched at it. そういう話。魔女なんかいないぜ。いるのは犯人。それも私たちと同じ人間だ。それを確かめる必要があるってなら、やつ先にして血が赤いかも確認してやろうじゃねえか。くそ。くそ。よくも。カノンクも。Genji unlocked the door. Yate entered Kinzo's study. Grandfather's study. I'd heard rumors about beforehand, so it didn't surprise me all that much. He had done nothing more than fortify it thoroughly with his occult hobbies. If Grandfather's hobby had been chasing after pop idols, these walls might have been buried beneath idol posters. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine that. That would be certainly interesting and bring a little levity to the situation. Maybe if you put down, maybe if you uh, take down Beatrice's portrait, maybe there's a pop idol poster behind it. Even if I didn't understand it, I did realize this room was an amalgamation of all the things he enjoyed. Even so, I couldn't help but remain dumbfounded by the smell of his creepy medicine and the sweet stench that seemed to melt my head. When the door closed, it automatically made a clunk. I see, this is the auto lock that's activated whenever the door is closed. And there was only two keys which could open this door from the outside, both of which were in this room. In other words, this room had become a locked room. The shutter, the receipt, the chain, and now the auto lock. This fourth door had been locked in the most magnificent fashion yet, constructing a locked room in a perfect form that none could argue with. Just to make absolutely sure that the room was secure, we checked all over for ways in or out. The windows were tightly locked. That should have been enough, but just in case, we tried knocking all over the walls. After all, there had been whispers there might be a hidden door in this room, but we couldn't find anything suspicious. Grandfather's study was very large. Even though we called it a study, it wasn't really a single room. It could be divided up into four basic sections. A study section, a bedroom section, a toilet bathroom section, and a section for cooking that had a sink. I see, the study does have enough fit in it to live in. Now I can understand how Grandfather could live his whole life in this room without ever leaving. It seemed Grandfather wasn't in the habit of watching TV. There was no television in this room, not even a radio. Until tomorrow morning, there'd be nothing for us to do but pass the time listening to the sound of the rain. Dr. Nanjo gazed at the chessboard that sat on the table in front of the sofa and muttered. It was apparently the partially finished chess match he'd been playing with Grandfather until yesterday. The black had the white pretty well cornered, and it looked like checkmate would be reached within a few moves. The end of the end game. Ooh, foreshadowing that the end of this game will be over soon? Even though checkmate had almost been reached, the end game had been rushed, and in the end was never completed. <sighs> やはり金蔵さんの友人だったが金蔵さんのことを知っているのは半分だけでしかなかった金蔵さんにはいつも聡明な金蔵さんと何かの狂気にとらわれた金蔵さんの二人が同居していたように思うわしは金蔵さんの
The lady in this portrait was strongly related to the basis and background of these crimes. You couldn't talk about them without talking about her. The letter! Oh my gosh! How many times have I forgotten about the letter in this episode? <laughs> Et Natsui took out that Western-style envelope. Genji-san pulled a letter opener out of a drawer in the study desk and handed it to her. While watching her open it, George Aniki grimaced slightly. After all, it was a letter left at the site where his parents had been murdered. There was a good chance its contents would say something unbearable to Aniki. It seemed that Aunt Natsui also realized that. So she glanced over the contents first without reading it aloud. We were all a little frightened that she might grimace after reading something shocking, but she just frowned unhappily. Et Natsui, after deciding the contents could be shown to the children, set it openly on the table. Everyone stared at it at the same time. Okay, hold up just a second. Let's go into the... Beatrice の勝ち名乗りみたいなものだろうね。くそ。ほう。大型。また怪しげな魔法人でも出てくるのを期待してたんだろう。Okay, I guess maybe they're not going to read it, so I heard the sound, so let's go into the tips. There we go, letter from the witch too. Oh, it just literally says, praise my name. <laughs> okay, when she said, there's one, there's one uh, thing that might be upsetting to hear, it's, oh, oh okay, that's it. Oh, but that, hold up, hold up. That was the thing on the third twilight or something, you will praise my name or something. Letter from the, no, the epitaph, that's it. On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. That's right. And then after that is when all that bad stuff is going to start happening about, like... Let's go back to it again. Yeah, the fourth twilight, gouge the head, gouge the chest, gouge the stomach. The thing is, does that refer to people, or is that, like... Is that a little bit more, um... Oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, is that for interpretation about gouging a head and kill? Like, the head of a human or something else? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, so far it's been following the epitaph pretty closely about the murders. どういう意味でしょう自分の存在を誇示したいのでしょうかそう考えるのが妥当でしょうこの手紙で初めて私たちは昨夜の手紙の主が犯人であると理解できる ここに書かれている内容よりも昨夜と同じ封筒でというところに意味があるものと思います。封筒も封筒も間違いなく親方様が使われていたものです。ほう、もう私には何が何だかわかりませんよ。こんなことは後宮のお家にお仕えして以来
As Grandfather's most trusted servant who had sworn loyalty to him, he might be the most influenced by the witch illusion that Grandfather had created. So there was only one reason for Genji-san to remain silent. He could say it, but it would definitely cause a backlash. So it would be better if he kept his mouth shut, and it wasn't like we'd believe him anyway. Something along those lines. Only a short while ago, Maria had been more than willing to speak, blunt, to speak bluntly and unrestrainedly, and that had earned her a scuffle with Jessica. It was natural for Genji-san to keep his silence. His mistress. That could be possible. For ordinary poor people, polygamy isn't only viewed negatively from a moral perspective, it's also an unmaintainable financial situation. But that isn't the case for the very rich. It's possible for them to have another lover in addition to their real wife. We can't deny the possibility that Grandfather had another woman in his life besides Grandmother. <laughs>私は<笑> 30年以上も昔から、おじいさまと連れ添っていたということになるね。その<笑> 一番納得できる筋書きです。どうですか、源氏。おそらく親方様に恋愛の感情は終わりになられたでしょう。おやしきができるより前にお亡くなりになったと聞いています。おやしきができるより前にお亡くなりになったと聞いています。おやしきができるより前にお亡くなりになったと聞いています。おやしきができるより前にお亡くなりになったと聞いています。おやしきができるより前
まだ生き残っていた後宮家の長老たちの意向で亡くなった奥さんとの結婚を決められたのですつまり後宮家にとって得になる女性との結婚を強制されたさようです金蔵さんはお家復興のためだけに当主に据えられ全ての重責を背負わされたのですそんな金蔵さんがどこでどういう経緯でベアトリーチェと知り合ったのかは分かりかねます、はあ、それ以上語るのは無粋だな That was when grandfather truly fell in love for the first time. How deep that affection must have been. It was easy to tell just by looking around us. This room was covered with piles upon piles of things having to do with black magic, and grandfather had spent day after a long day shut in here, immersed in his research and isolated from the outside world, never taking a single day off. You couldn't help but realize how deep grandfather's love for Beatrice was. <laughs> Perhaps they had been acting as though at least Beatrice's soul had been restored and existed inside the mansion in order to soothe grandfather's heart. With closed eyes and an expression as though he was remembering something from the distant past, Genji maintained his silence. He probably felt that to confess that would be to betray his one and only master in the most serious way, even though that person was already dead. Beatrice had revived as her witch, and she's in the mansion even now. That was his mantra, what he had believed, what had made others believe, or what he had made others believe, and Genji would take that with him to the grave. This might have been the last service he could offer his master. The legend of the witch, the mysterious tale of Rokunjima that was still whispered of amongst the servants. Its true nature was a sad lie. No, an act of kindness towards grandfather, who had lost the person he loved above all else. <sighs> それがどれだけお父様を傷つけていたかわかります今の僕にならわかるよシャノンを蘇らせる方法が黒魔術だと言うなら、oh, I, was that, I was thinking that the、uh, that parallel between、uh, Kinzo and George both in love with a woman that is not quote unquote right for the family they're like of not、uh, you know they're not of upstanding like they're I don't know how to describe it, I guess. It's just like they wouldn't be able to advance the family name forward because they're just common people. Even worse for George because she's a servant. Another strand of tears dripped from George's eyes. Maybe it was infectious. Tears rose to Jessica's eyes too, and she sniffled. Beatrice was in the same way. And here comes Mari to say something to make everybody upset. Ojiki, Yomi Gaeru Kotoga Dekiru. Ao Kotoga Dekiru. Very soon, the door to the Golden Land would be open. In that promised land that glitters gold, she'll resurrect all the dead people's souls and revive the love they possessed as well. And I will sleep in a world of peacefulness forevermore. So it tonoko. マリアに手紙を渡したベアトリーチェは信じないよね<笑>ここにじい様がいたならきっと喜んだろうなもうじきベアトリーチェが蘇ることにさぞや踊り上がって喜んだろうななら俺は信じたぜじい様が半生をかけて研究したことで蘇り愛した女の魂が蘇ったと信じて寿命を全うできるって言うんなら俺も信じたぜバトラー一人の女性をずっと愛し続けた気持ちが周りにも伝わり真実となるそれを気遣いと呼べばそれまでだろうけれど今の僕はあえてそれを
魔法と呼んであげたいね気遣いじゃないよ本当に魔法だよ魔女だよ<笑>やっぱり誰にもベアトリーチェの姿は見えないんだね Some time passed. As we listened to the sound of the rain, we considered what kind of love and madness must have possessed the owner of this room as he spent half his life here. きれいごとにされちゃかなわねえよなそれもそうだなばあさまが気の毒になっちまうぜそれでベアトリーチェとおじいさまの間に子供がいたなんて話はある The key word ベアトリーチェ has been hidden in every corner of this case so it's natural to suspect any relative of ベアトリーチェいえそのような話は聞いたことがありません仮にいたとしたら最愛の人の忘れがたみとしてきっと全ての愛情を注ぎ込んだだろうねそれがなく黒魔術に没頭していったなら子供はいなかったと考えるべきなのかなそういえばこんな噂を聞いたことがあるぜ知ってるだろじい様が。福音の家っていう福祉施設に莫大な援助をしてるって話。The Gospel House, that's where the servants are from. Oh, what's this have to do with it? よしなさい。それはお父様を冒涜する抽象にすぎません。What if they had many children and all of the all the servants are secretly like his grandchildren? He got busy. 教えてくれよ。夏日おば隠し事はなしなのは。おばさんもだと思うっすよ。くだらない話ですお父様はその施設に莫大な援助をし社会勉強の一環として当家の使用人雇用枠を開放していました。Or, or he's using the servants as like、uh, pawns for this game where it's like if he has more people to sacrifice, then he like takes on these children that have you know no future, nowhere to go, and he Has them like indebted certitude for him to sacrifice later in order to revive the witch. So, what was I? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Yeah, 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 m a y 福音の家出身の使用人ってのは何人かいますが親族会議中のシフトではシャノンとカノンの2人でした。To resurrect Bay to reach a, he'd summoned servants from a welfare institute as sacrifices? 確かにじい様が使用人として選ぶのはいつもシャノンやカノン君くらいの若い子ばかり。私だって。じいさまには妙な趣味があるに違いないって信じてたぜ。Maybe young people have more magical power for a sacrifice? Like, you know, the youth, blood of the youth, or something like that? ジェシカ言葉を慎みなさい !When Aunt Natsui scolded her, the atmosphere instantly went sour and everyone felt quiet. However, something was tugging at the back of my mind. Sacrifices. Sacrifices. Sacrifices brought over from the Gospel House. What is it? Freaky words like sacrifices don't pop up often. Yet I've seen or heard that word somewhere recently. Some part of my memory is tugging at me. Come on, Beatrice. What do you know? I had arrived in front of the portrait of Beatrice. It wasn't as vast as the one in the entrance hall. But that portrait, which you must have, drawn by, which you must have had drawn by some famous painter, Was still just as intimidating in this smaller size. Below it, just like in the entrance hall, was the epitaph said to point out the place where the gold was hidden. Oh, 
You're just realizing this now, my dude? Both my eyes open as wide as plates. Right there, everything had been predicted since the very beginning. Everyone crowded around. And Mari's gonna be like, really guys? You're just getting this now? Come on. The same expression of terror filled every face. Yes. It was written in the epitaph. Now they're gonna realize that, that this is the third Twilight. Praise my name. And the second Twilight was the two that were close. That's Ava and Hideyoshi. Which means the fourth Twilight, the fifth Twilight, the sixth Twilight. Gouge the head. Gouge the knee. Gouge the stomach. On the first Twilight, sacrifice the six chosen by the key. <laughs> She's like, man, you guys are slow. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Maria had said it at the very beginning. Right after we found the six bodies, when Maria was in the parlor watching TV, she had said it. Ooh, killer's not human, just the sacrifices chosen by the key. Oh, this music is so, like, um, anxiety-inducing. ロクタスにいた凄で。十三人は死ななくちゃならないことになってるぜ。普段はこの島には何人いるんですか。使用人のシフトにもよるでしょうが。お、making Poor Badler, he's like the one time I go to one of these family conferences in six years, it happens to be the one where the sacrifices are happening. <laughs> When Jessica screamed this, Maria broke out in that creepy laugh, looking truly pleased. <laughs> like drawing a sandal and saying if it lands right side up, tomorrow will be sunny. Or saying tomorrow will be a good day if a coin lands on heads. There are many little superstitions like that. If you're fed up at how nothing is going right for you, and you happen to roll some dice and get three sixes, it would probably make you want to believe it's a sign of some miracle. <laughs> Rolling sixes, a little bit of a reference to something? When flipping a sandal, you have at worst a 50% chance. Even if you get it right side up, it's not worth much. But if you carelessly throw three dice and they all come up six, you might think that's a small miracle. A miracle! <laughs> ひたすらに祈祷を続ける。そうして蓄えられた祈祷の念は奇跡の出目が現れた時、魔力を持って具現化される。おじい様が使用とした魔術は多分そういうもの。鍵が無作為に選ぶ生贄の抽選。それに万
Jessica's like, Mom, can I have that charm back, please? <laughs> And maybe Valor will try and... He might make more of an effort to try and find the charm that he lost or be like, Hey, Mario, do you have another charm in that bag by any chance? これは。今様たちのことを指しているのでしょうか。悔しいけど、そうだと判断せざるを得ない。そして母さんたちを殺した犯人は続く第三の番の言葉を手紙に書き。<笑> その場に残したんだからね。そ、そうだな。第二の番を実行し、第三の番をその場に残した。第三の番は、まさにさっき夏おばさんが読んだ通りだぜ。On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. Oh, now I read it. It just keeps going on, doesn't it? On the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. Gouge the head and kill. George and Iki's parents were killed with the demon's ice picks gouged into their heads. But if that counted as the second twilight, someone else must be gouged in the head. Oh, gouge the stomach and kill. That's canon, right? Oh, here I was thinking... Okay, here I was thinking the Twilights that they all had to happen on different nights. But I guess that's not the case, so... What's the next one? So, Gouge the Stomach, that's canon. And then there's Gouge the Knee, I think? Alright, I had this all mixed up. I was like, damn, this is going to be taking place over a lot of nights. Or Gouge the Chest, not the Stomach, but same diff. ハニントの突発的な遭遇による犯行だと思ってたけど、死が誰か一人を追い引き出し、胸を貫くことを初めから狙っていたんだ。もし犯人がこれをなぞっているとしたなら、また三人が死ななければならないというのですか。on the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach. Okay, so chest and stomach are both different things. Gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. Alright, at first I... At first I was thinking, I was like, maybe that whole thing, maybe that's a euphemism for something. It's not actually gouging someone's head. No, it's pretty literal, actually. <laughs> And then everyone dies anyway, doesn't it? On the night twilight, the witch revives, and none shall be left alive. On the tenth twilight, the journey ends, and you shall reach the home of the gold. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow four treasures. よ。つの宝の2番と3番を見てごらんよ。1つは全ての死者の魂を蘇らせ。1つは失った愛すらも蘇らせる。つまりおじい様は自分がこの儀式の途中で死んでしまっても、やがては復活できると信じてた。バカ
Genji, you're hiding something. What? その可能性を考えられるのですか。わかりません。親方様は時に千年の未来を見越されるほどの聡明なお方です。しかし、凡庸な私にはそれが狂気としか映らないこともあります。それってイエスって意味だよな。熊沢さんはどうなんだよ。
Aunt Natsui was pointing the rifle at Genji and the others bellowing at them. Genji-san was overpowered, his face looking like he didn't have a clue what was going on. Of course, I felt the same. But a moment late, I reached the same conclusion Aunt Natsui had. Until just a few seconds ago, there was no letter like this on the table. Nobody had entered the room. That means someone amongst us had placed it there during the few seconds where everyone was looking away, preoccupied with the portrait. I picked up the envelope. It was still sealed with wax. Even without disturbing its contents, I realized this was an unopened envelope, an unknown envelope. Without relying on a letter opener, I violently tore it open and pulled the letter inside. The contents were as follows. この Oh shit. oh shit, she gonna start blasting? Oh damn. That was the servants. That's right. その時、この世の怪しげな手紙は決して置かれていなかったことを確認しています。そしてその時、すでにジェシカとジョージ君、マトラ君は肖像画の前にいた。そして彼らはこの手紙が現れるまで肖像画の前を離れていない。つまり、あなたたち4人の中にその手紙を置いた人物がいる。ベアトリーチがいる。おお。Oh Nancho and Maria. Oh my gosh. あなたたちの中の一人が疑わしいのか。全員が疑わしいのか分かりません。しかし、確実にあなたたちの中に犯人が混じっている。そ、そうだぜ。19人目なんかいるわけがない。魔女なんかいるわけがないんだ。彼の
It was pitiful to walk do watch Dr. Nanjo frantically pleading his innocence. It was probably a normal reaction that anyone would give if they were suspected. Kumasawa was the same. Since Jessica had started suspecting her in the murder of Kanan, she was now totally flustered. That's why Genji-san's still calm appearance looked so bold. And Natsui pointed the barrel of the gun. Genji, I think I, I think I joked earlier about how Beatrice is actually Genji in a dress. <laughs> but I'm not saying that that's not so he's saying that he's Beatrice, but it's just kind of funny that he's just like, are you a fantasy of his? <laughs> とても名誉なことだと存じます。しかし、この手紙を置いたのは私ではありません。それを私が鵜呑みにできると思いますか？お前が死亡者に決まっています。あるいは熊沢も南条先生もその共犯かもしれない。マリアちゃんもです。Not content to doubt just the adults, Aunt Natsui pointed the gun relentlessly at Maria too. But Maria acted as though nothing had happened. Or maybe she thought she'd be fine, even if she was shot. マリアちゃん、今この場ではもう幼いから疑いの枠から外すという段階にない。だから誰もが昨夜からずっと持ってきた疑問をもう一度ぶつけさせてもらいます。昨日バラ庭園であなたに手紙を渡したベアトリーチ
ここはちょいと冷静になろうぜとにかく打つのはまずいぜ<笑> Well, here's the thing. I might be just. Okay, instead of start. Instead of just blasting people. I know it seems like a bad thing to do, but if Natsui takes both keys off of Genji, and there's no way for them to be able to get into this room, if they assume he's telling the truth about there only being two master keys to get into this room, then lock them out, and you just stay there until, like, the morning. <laughs> クールになれって3回唱えるといいらしいぜ。はっきりさせておきます。魔女などいない。ここは6軒島で。ここは後宮家の本家屋敷です。後宮家代表、後宮夏日として宣言します。ここには魔女などいない。ベアトリーチェな